In this episode of Five Things, we'll start out with a Wii Tenor G Bluetooth Smart Electricity Usage Monitor and Programmable Timer. If you've ever heard of a product called Kilowatt, it's kind of the same thing. However, this adds a couple things beyond what the Kilowatt will do. It's a monitor that you can use to monitor your AC usage. It will provide you reading in volts, amps, watts, amp hours, and the power factor. Now, power factor is something most people don't understand, and I probably really need to do a video on that because it has to do a lot with with how you can size a generator. It Bluetooths with a phone, so it does provide a remote control on and off. You can also set a timer so you can turn the appliance on and off at a certain time. But for my purposes, it provides a logging function, and this function can show power usage over time. And for 16 bucks, I mean, it's pretty cheap, so it's something handy to have. When I first obtained this device, I used it with an iPhone, and it worked very well. However, recently my iPhone quit working and all they had to replace it was a Samsung Galaxy A50 with Android 10 and the app does not work 100% with Android. The basic function works fine. Once you know it, the logging function no longer works. And when you pair, you just gotta hold this down for three seconds until the red light comes on, and then it will pair with your phone. And to do a basic test, I'm connecting a meter to my portable refrigerator, and I'm just gonna map the performance of the refrigerator over time, just to see how it cycles on and off, which is really what you need the data logger for. And you can see in the first screen with the iPhone, I do have the logging function. And by the way, this was the on and off cycle of my mini fridge. And that's why a logging function is so important because over time you can show the behavior of the device. And the second screen capture shows the Android device and there is no logging available. So if you have an iPhone, this is going to work just fine. But if you have an Android, the usability is not as good. And it remains to be seen whether or not they'll ever update the app. Next up is this Accurite lightning detector. And this is such a great idea for camping, whether you're in the tent or you're in an RV. Obviously in a tent, you wanna be careful if there's lightning around, but even in an RV, if you're out hiking or something, you wanna be able to get back to shelter. And this device operates on the principle of spherics, S-F-E-R-I-C-S, -E a shortened version of atmospherics. Not many people listen to AM radio these days, but if you have, and if there's lightning in the area, you get a burst of static. Well, this device picks up on that. Now we're in the dog days of summer in mid-July, and we're supposed to get some lightning this evening. This is a good time to test it. And we'll just turn power on. And that is all there is to it. And also there is an indoor setting if you depress both buttons at the same time. And the indoor setting basically compensates for higher background noise. But it does say in the manual that motors and PC screens and things can cause false positives. And the manual does say that the range is 1 to 25 miles. In the meantime, I have a cordless drill, which is brushed, so that should cause more noise. That's pretty good that it didn't go off on the drill. Unable to detect that we received means that interference was detected, so used at a different location. So that's cool. It differentiated between lightning and interference. And later that afternoon, the promised thunderstorm activity did occur. And a quick peek to the weather radar shows that we do indeed have a line of thunderstorms coming in. And you can see here six lightning strikes that are six miles away. However, when you look at the sky, it looked pretty threatening. So I'm not sure how much of an advance warning this really is going to give. So my conclusion is that it actually does detect lightning strikes. However, does it give you enough advanced warning to do any good? That remains to be seen. A couple of years ago, I did a review on this Thermocell mosquito repellent device. This particular one is the MR150, and actually it works pretty good. However, I recently ran across another one, and this is called the Backpack Edition. And the main difference is the fuel is the same one that you would use for a camp stove. There's several different models of the Thermocell devices, but they all have a 15 by 15 foot protection zone, regardless of which one you buy, except for the battery operated one, and that is 10 by 10. So why would you buy this one if you already had this one? Basically, they're the same performance wise. Really what you're getting is just the convenience of having something that is easier just to set on a table, I suppose. Now the cost of running this is almost the same. And for a 48 hour replacement, this costs $18. This costs $21. However, the 48 hour replacement for this one includes the fuel. This one does not, so you still have to buy the canister. So actually the final price is about the same. 
And this is the pad out of the backpack version. And it's identical in size to the pad here. And in the backpack version, you get a little bag along with the device itself. And this device actually is kind of cute. Has a nice little cover for the fuel port. And like the other style, this just slides in. And then you screw the canister on, turn it on, and then you start it. And if you look down the little hole, you can see the flame. That's all there is to it. And we're back to the kitchen with the Magic Bullet and the Magic Bullet Mini. And I ended up buying both of these because they weren't that expensive. And I wanted to just compare one from the other to see if the smaller one would work fine. And if you watched any of my videos, you do know that I like to keep things compact in an RV world because things just pack so much easier. And in reality, there's not a whole lot of difference in the two sizes. These are the basic additions of both models, which means they don't come with a lot of attachments. But do you really need to use all those attachments? And this version of the Magic Bullet was around $38. The Mini was around $21 or so. You're getting the Mini for about half the price. And you can spend over $100 on one of these things if you get all the attachments with all the cups and everything. And actually, I think the Mini is going to be sufficient for our use. Because we don't make a lot of smoothies and things. What we do mostly is things like chopping onions, making guacamole or other sauces, that kind of thing. So the mini will work out great for us. Also, the full-size one is rated for 250 watts, while the mini is rated for 200 watts. So the full-size one is a little more powerful. But then again, you're going to probably be grinding bigger things with it too. So the 200 watt one should do just fine. So that's the one we're going to stick with. And you want a little onion in your scrambled egg? No problem. Just throw a little onion in the cup. And there you go. My wife actually had the idea of buying this collapsible camping bucket. Again, in an RV or in a camping situation, you want things that you can store easily. And that's certainly the case with this. And I didn't really think much of it, but we've used this thing for dozens of things. Anything from giving the dog a drink to pouring on a campfire and filling a bucket full of ice. <laughs> 